Hello everyone, my name is Agon and introduce you to creating a Node.js server app and a RESTful API with Express.js as a framework. Uh, this is an introductionary workshop and previous knowledge of JavaScript is recommended and some previous knowledge of Node.js, how Node.js works. You should have installed MongoDB, Node.js, NPM for this to work. Firstly, we will initialize our project. We will create a new fol folder. So this app will be like a to-do list. We will create two models, users model and to do uh, issues model and we will create controllers we will create models we will create the endpoints for those controllers and we will test the apis with insomnia we are on the uh, project directory that we just created we will run npm in it. npm is a node package manager. We will create the initial project. So package name, version, description, if you want to add something, we will leave this as app.js and if everything is okay, this initializes our project it just creates a package package.json file here uh, package.json file uh, will hold this uh, in data about our project and will hold data about the packages that we're going to use in our app so let's go to the express js website and we can go to hello world and we can see here this is a boilerplate app that will run so we first we need to install the express js dash dash save means to save the package in our package.json for later use all right we added now I think it's only express yeah that was my mistake sorry <clears throat> now we have it express installed and we will open this project here and here in node modules we will have the packages that we need these packages come with express we will create our entry file and We can just copy and paste this just to try it if everything works. And here we have a terminal and we can run node.app.js. And we see that this is working. We are listing on port 3000 and we can try opening that port here. Send a get request. And we see that the server is returning a response on the main endpoint. So this is a simple in initial setup. What we have here, we are requiring Express, the framework. We are initializing the 
Express app on app. And here we are setting up one endpoint, main endpoint, and we're set, we're returning hello world. So this is hello world app with Express. Now we're gonna start um, installing some packages that we will need. We will need mongoose for connecting to our database and we will need body parser and for now we will just use these two body parser is for encoding and, de and decoding json <clears throat> all right uh, let's make sure we have mongo running okay i have mongo running uh, you should have MongoDB installed, Node.js, NPM. NPM comes with Node.js these days. To be able to follow on this project, please do this before starting on following the code. So initially, we will create a path for our database. MongoDB requires a prefix of MongoDB and we are we have our database running on our local host and I think I'm not sure I think Mongo runs on 2000 2, 2, 7, 0, 7, 1, 7. let me check Word uh, is yeah, default MongoDB port, and then we want to give this database a name. Uh, we can do it like this, and to be able to connect to our MongoDB database, we need to require mongoose that we just installed and now we can try to connect to our TV path and we need a function that says uh, so here we know that we are connected successfully we can say on our console that we got connected And also we need to catch an error if something is happening. So now we can try this if it works. Uh, all right, we are connected to database and our app is running. There are some warn deprecation warnings, but if you want you can you can fix those. It's it is asking for an options object here that will say use new URL parser true and 
that. We can try this now. And it's asking for another option here. Use unified topology true so that we can remove the warnings. Uh, if you wanna do, if you don't wanna close the server and start it again after every change, there is this package that you can install like npm install globally nodeman. It's called nodeman, and when you run nodeman, it reloads the changes and restarts the server. Now it's watching my files. Whenever I save, it will reload and restart the server. So currently, what we have done is we have connected to a MongoDB database that will. Uh, we have a connection to a MongoDB database with the name SFK to do. We are running on port 3000 and we are ready to start creating the rest of the API. Um, initially, we will go, we will create a folder models and here we can create a file user.model js and um, here we can hold on one second something all right I'm back <clears throat> here we're gonna create our schemas or database schemas our models. Firstly, we will create, of course, we need to require Mongoose here too. And we need to create our schema. Or we can start with creating the to do schema. This will be a simple schema. That will have maybe two fields only. So we will have description that will be a type of string. And we'll, we will say this is required. And maybe we can add result or we can say it's done and this will be a type of boolean and default will be false so when we create a new one there won't be any uh, we won't need to send the default we'll create an object since we will have two two different kind of schemas. We don't need to repeat this. We will create uh, object schema options and we'll define the option that we need right now. So for now we need timestamps to be true. And we can add the options here. And now we can create the user schema here that will hold the
to do schema. So what do we want for user? We want to have a first name, which will be a string. And we can say also this first name will be required. Quite true. And we want to have a last name. Same here, it will be a type of string and it will be required. Um, we will need an email for the user. This will be string and required too. And we will have a password for the user also. <coughs> We can say this will be required too. And we can add another min length, another option. And let's say the minimum length of a password should be six characters. And over here we need another option. So email should be unique. And so we're gonna have, so the user is gonna have to do's and this will be an array of to do schema. And I think that's it. We can add the options here. Now we're almost ready. I need, we need to export this and make it a model. So this model will be a user and we will have one document which will be called user. Uh, actually it's a collection, sorry. So one entry will be equal to one document. So this is our user model. We're gonna come back here and add some more stuff probably. So when we when we start from the model, we move to the this is my way of working. You can do it in other ways. I initially build the model, then I create the controller, create the functions for the controller, and then I move to the routes and I add them on the main entry point. So now we're going to create a user controller.js and here we're going to import our model that we created right now. Here in models, we're going to require the user model. And we're going to export all functions that we create here. And what we're going to need, we're going to need, we're going to need a find function which will have params and the callback. And we're gonna need the find. Um, let's go with create, so we can see it, we can test it more easily. So we're gonna create a new user, and we're gonna go with user dot create. So and. 
in params we have a body and this will return callback this function of the mount use will return a callback and usually like not usually always you will have the error first and if it's successful you will have the user returned and so if we have an error again call back error and the other part will be null and of course we're going to return not move forward else we will call call back so error will be null now because we don't have any error but we will return the user and now we're going to create the routes folder we're going to create the user routes.js and we're going to here we need we're going to need express and we're going to initialize the router create the routes and we're going to need the user controller require controllers user controller and for now we're going to create only one route this will be a post route so, so in API endpoints, we have different verbs. We have get, that is used for getting information from the server. We have post, which is used to create an entry on the server. And we have uh, delete, which is a request that is used for deleting stuff. And we have put which is used for updating stuff that is currently on the server. So now the first argument here is the path that we're going to use and it will be the main path of the user and we're going to have a request and a response and here here we're creating a user can also say sign up here if you want to usually it's, it's best to leave just creating a user but sometimes you want it to be more defined and we're gonna use the controller to create a new user we have only one function there which is create and it will require some, some params so we're gonna directly send the requ request body we're not doing any checks right now any validation data validation and we're gonna have a callback that will come so the first argument was an adder and the second argument was the result the returning user so if we have an error we're gonna say we're gonna re return and just say confirmation is false message error dot message and see what was returned later we can add more checks and maybe not return directly from the database error that we're receiving so if we don't have any errors it means uh, our record has been created and we're gonna need so confirmation is true I'm just adding confirmation true you, you, you will get used to the best practice of creating a REST API and we're gonna return the, the result right now 
we have created the controller which is directly creating the user in the, in the database we have a model for the user we have a first name last name email password and we can add to those later after the user is created and we have the route sign up for user and now we're gonna want to import that route um, we don't need this to, to do app doesn't get mm. right let's import the user route so it's in routes user routes and we need to use this so we're gonna say API user is user routes we're gonna give this predefined handler and then when we're using for example creating a user or signing up we're gonna add sign up so a complete route would look like localhost 3000 api user sign up and the method was post let's save All right we have an error router use mm -hmm. okay I think we forgot to export the router here So we need to export the router so that we can use it on our app.js file and now we can start insomnia insomnia is a tool to test we can Create a new request here, or let's create a new folder. It's a good to do, and we can create sign up here. This will be post request, and the body will be JSON. So the route will be HTTP localhost. The port that we're using is 3000. We have API user sign up and in the body we're gonna add we have first name I'm gonna sign my name last name and we're gonna send the an email and we're gonna send a password password was required it's a string so we need at least six characters and we're gonna give it a try password is required last name that's required first name all right so the JSON is not correct hmm. Oh yeah, forgot to import body parser. We have installed it. But we have forgot to use it. So let's use body parser here. Mm. So we're gonna use JSON 
and we're gonna put the limit of 15 megabits. <clears throat> we're gonna give it another try. So we have created our first user. MongoDB gives a default, creates a field ID, underscore ID, which is an object ID. It's a, it's a default behavior and you don't want to, yeah, I wouldn't remove it, I would use it, but in case you want to remove it, you need to add the option to remove the IDs and use your own system of creating IDs. You haven't created this, but this is there. Also, we haven't created, created that or updated that, but we said in our model here that we want timestamps and we gave those options here. So we have successfully created our uh, user and now we're gonna create our other functions. So we're going to need find to to get all users or to query search users. Okay, some params and we're going to have a callback. We're going to be returning users. If there's an error, we're going to call back the error, return the error. So if there's no error, we're going to send the error is null and return the users. So this is going to be our find function in our controller. It would be an good idea to be able to find the user, a specific user by ID. So we need a find by ID function. And there's going to be an ID and a callback. User dot, we have the function here, find by ID. And we can just Send the ID here, and the callback will be error. No. Error user. It's not callback, sorry. So if we have an error, it was the same. We don't handle the error here. We can handle it here. We're not doing that. And we're gonna, if nothing, if no errors, we're gonna return the user. So why the callback? Why are we sending a function to and calling that function when everything is done? So we don't know when the data will be ready. Uh, so this operation is asynchronous. We are giving this callback function and letting JavaScript know like when when you find the user, call this function and let me know that you have found the user and send the user back as an argument. <clears throat> For example, here where when we're creating or giving a function. So this function is being sent in the controller as callback and we're telling the we're defining the function and what the, what it needs to do. So now we have find by ID. We have, we're gonna have update. So we need to update be able to update the user. So we're gonna have ID params and a callback. 
we need the ID to find the user, we need the body to be able to update the user. Update one. And we're gonna give a condition here. We're gonna find one by ID. And we're gonna, the second option is gonna be the params, the body, and we're gonna return the updated user. So if we have an adder, we're gonna call back turn. If you have no error, we're gonna return the user that we have updated. If you have update, find by ID, find and create. And we need to be able to delete. So we're going to have an ID and a callback and we're going to delete, find one and delete. And so this is going to need D and we're going to have a callback. And the, it will return the deleted user. So if we have an error, we do the same here. If no error, we're gonna call back and return with the deleted user. So basically, we have created five functions in our con controller currently, and we're gonna implement those and test them in our routes. So we have sign up for creating the user. We're gonna have let's just stop. Get one user. We're gonna get one user by ID. And we're gonna use the find by ID function that we created. And here we're gonna access the rec params ID, which are is provided the, in the URL. So If we have an error, we can send the error. We can say, or we can add another check if no user that status flow for not found confirmation false message user not found. Or we can just return and return the user. Right, so now we have this ID here and we can test this. 
a request get user and we can try this here API user and we can paste the ID and see if we can find it so we have the user we're looking for by this ID here so this is and if we add something here cast to object ID internal server error so this is what's an invalid ID we just change something here yeah user not found so we are handling two different cases we can handle more but of course this is a short introduction to Node.js and Express.js creating REST APIs. I'm not going to go into a lot of details. <clears throat> now we're going to create, so we have covered this and this. We're going to create a new endpoint. And we're going to return all users. Get all users. All right. We're going to use the main endpoint and yeah, we need the right request and response. And we're going to use our controller, find, we're going to use. So here, if we want to have some search queries, if we want to implement some queries and return specific users, we can. But currently, right now, we just want to return all users. And if you have an error, I'm going to return the error. Um, if no error, we're going to return status 200 and confirmation true and return users. So now, if we, we can just duplicate this, get users. and just test the API. We only have one user right now, but if we, if we try to do this, we have duplicate key error for email, and we can John Doe, John at SFK, we can create another user, and if we go now, we see that we have two users being returned by our new endpoint. So we're covering three cases until now. We have used all of these three functions. We need two more. We need update. And we're going to use update now. Update you, sir. For update, we're going to use the method put. We're going to need an ID to know which user we're going to update. And now we're going to use the update function that we have created. And we're gonna send the ID. We're gonna send the body for the update, and we're gonna do our user. So we can just say if there is some unexpected error, and if not, let's that is. We can check what the status is. Scope for update. Let's take it. 
Uh, we can use 200 before. Both 200 and 204 are valid. Can use 204. And we can, <coughs> we can send the confirmation true and return the updated user. Now we can try this. I don't know if you're seeing, but we're getting another deprecation error. And we need to use another option here. Create index is true. And let's use create index. Use create index. Yep. Hmm. So the server is restarting on its own with no demand. Whenever I'm, I'm having changes, and we have created the update user endpoint, and we're going to test that right now. So we're going to update John Doe to change its email. Update user. This is going to be a put. We're going to send the ID and we're going to change the name, first name, from John to Jason. All right, nobody returned for response. Let's check. Let's see if the user has been updated. The user has been updated successfully, but we don't have body. Why? Response. Mm -hmm. This is weird. If we change the error. All right. So the status code was, and also this is not returning the updated user. Mm-hmm. You can check this real quick. Options. New true. All right, we need to pass an option to the controller. Rams. New true. This is an option. That should give us Anyway, what are we using here? We can use find one and update. And try now. Yeah. So we update the name again. 
we see the updated user. So the status 204 doesn't return the body. We're using status 200. And we have one endpoint left, which is delete. And we're going to use a method delete. We're going to have a request and a response here also. And we're going to delete. We're going to send a Rex params ID. And we're going to have a callback. And if we have an adder, let's return the adder. True user and we're gonna try the delete now. We're gonna delete this user. The method will be delete. There won't be anybody. And we're going to try to delete this. So confirmation true. This is the user that has been deleted. And we're going to get users now. We only have one user on our database. Okay. So now We see that whenever the database is returning, it's also returning the password. And this is not a good security practice. And what we can learn is something that we can do in our model. We're going to have an options here. And we're going to use transform, which will transform the document options. And this cannot be return. It's a keyword. Return is a keyword of JavaScript. We're going to delete the password before we send it. And now we can see this should remove the password field. And one other thing that we can do right now is encrypt the password. So we can install pcrypt. Here we can see all the packages and see the documentation about the packages that we want to use. Right, this is what we're going to use. Oh, 
Uh oh, I have installed the wrong package. Okay, so now we have bcrypt that will encrypt our password. And we can check here how we can encrypt. this here we can call a pre-save function so this will be called pre-save before saving a new user we're going to call this function. This will be like a metal. Uh, we're going to add the user and We cannot use arrow functions here because this will hold our user and we cannot use this. It changes the context without going any deeper. Arrow functions with the normal functions. So we're gonna generate the salt that will use 10 rounds. And if we have an error, and we're going to have a salt, and we're going to use that salt to hash the password. We're going to have a salt, and we're going to have a callback that will be. Error and the hashed password, and we're gonna save a hash in the user password and call next. To move on to the next part. We're not checking for any errors here, it's good to check, but we're not doing it right now. You can try this. Hopefully it works. So John Doe was removed. We can create another John Doe. And now <clears throat> we can open Mongo. Use this. Initial TVs use SFK to do. We don't have clear here. And we have users find pretty. Okay. So this is the first user that we have created, the first document. And the password here is not hashed. You, you can easily read it. But here the password is hashed, encrypted. So this, even if this is leaked, it will be more secured. Even if someone reads it, they won't know what the password is. So even though both of them have the same password, this is what it looks like when it's encrypted. Okay. And so this is this is a pre-save function that will be called before saving any new user. We have we can use other uh, 
So pre-aggregate, pre-count, pre-find, pre-insert, pre-update, pre... You can use many actions. So this is like an event handler. And now... We're gonna use the, we're gonna create the issues for the user. So now we're gonna need a new controller. So issue to do controller JS. Okay, let's save this. And here we're going to use the same model because we have both ish issues and user model in the same model. And we're going to export all func functions that we create here. And we're going to have create. We're always going to need user ID, brands, and a callback. And we're going to have we're going to have one, two, so three, create, read, update, delete. And we're going to create a new function to mark it as done. Create, read, update, delete. And I think that's enough. Find, update, delete, mark as done. The reason why we need always need the user ID is because we have the schema under a user. So first we need to find the user document and then inside the document we will have the schema. So here let's let's go creating a new one. So what we're going to need. Um, user find by ID and update. This is going to be an update to the user. We need to find the user document. And we're going to use a function here that is a push function. We're going to be pushing the shit on the array. That we have created a to do. So, did I name it to do right or issue to do's? Yeah, sorry for that. And we're gonna push the to do here. And we're gonna be returning an error for the whole user. So, if we have an error, we're going to call back and if we don't have an error we're going to return the whole user so now we're going to be able to create a new issue we're going to need routes um, to do JS. I'm going to create a new to do. I'm mixing it with issues from the GitHub list of issues, I'm calling it an issue. I'm sorry about that. So we're going to create the routes here. 
we said Kubernetes Express like we did previously. We're gonna initialize the router here too. And we're gonna import the controller. Issue controller, issue to controller, require controllers to do controller, and we're going to create the first ish, first to do. We're going to have a request response and Hmm. We're going to leave the user ID. So we're going to get the user ID here. And we're going to send right to end. Speak user ID and we're gonna send the body and that will return us the user, the whole user. And if we have an error, we're just gonna return the whole error. Return from the function. So if we don't have any error, we're gonna say everything runs smoothly, and we're gonna return another whole user, and then we can update. So let's give this a try. Oh, we need to import it app use and to do uh, we're gonna forgot to export the router again. All right, let's try it. Create to do. We're going to create the to do under me. And we have to do, and we need the user ID. Again, if we implement authentication with J JVT, maybe we can have the time to implement it now in this workshop. Then we don't need to send the ID like this. We can get the ID from the user. So, what was the model? We have a description. So we have only one description of the to do. Call landlord broken sync. And let's give it a try. Cannot post what. All right. Okay. Confirmation true. But we have not saved yet. We have saved the to do here. 
under my document. I have pushed the to do here, but there is a weird error here. Didn't return the updated user. So we're gonna fix that. New true. And we can try it again. So now we have the both to do's and we have the default status. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna check how much we recorded. All right. I'm gonna take a quick break. Okay, so now we're gonna be implementing the next functions, but before doing that, we're gonna replace this uh, ID in the route. So we're gonna be replacing this. We're gonna implement the login functionality and we're gonna use the authorized uh, user's ID. We're gonna do that with a module called password and we're going to be implementing JVT, which stands for JSON Web Token. A token, JSON Web Token is a token that the server will give to the client when they are when they log log in, so that the next time we're going to be using the token to authenticate the user instead of going to the database and checking if the, the user's credentials are correct. So for doing that. We're going to need passport and passport JVT. Passport is a package that helps us with the authentication in the routes and endpoints. So now we're going to try and configure the Passport We're gonna create a folder config where we're gonna place our configuration files and here is gonna be our passport configuration file and We're gonna require initially JVT strategy from password. There are other strategies also like OAuth session cookies and etc Is it G and extract JVT passport JVT extract JVT. Also, we're going to need the user controller. Gonna export function. Now we need an options object. We're gonna add some options. The first uh, let's let's name it correctly options.jvt from quest it's gonna do extract jvt from auth header with scheme jvt 
and options secret key or no usually it's it's a best practice to place the secret in a environment file env but for the sake of our time that is limited we're going to create a secret here it can be anything it can be any secret keyword and now we're gonna use <coughs> this strategy with options and we're gonna have a JVT payload and done and we're gonna find by ID JVT payload dot ID when we're gonna encode the JVT we're gonna place the ID of the user in the token so when we decode it in the payload there is gonna be the ID from the user now we're gonna look for the user and if there is an error return done false and there is no user return null and false and we're gonna return no user to JSON we're gonna convert it to JSON so this is our this this is gonna be our config password configuration and why do I have this all right and now we're gonna open the main file and we're gonna require passport and we're gonna use passport and I require a config file passport and when we require it we're gonna give this passport that we're requiring here as a param as an argument so what this does it it passes it here so that we can use it okay <clears throat> now we need to go to the user model and we need to create a function here schema methods we're gonna add a method compare we're gonna name it compare password and we're gonna give a password and the callback and we're gonna use com Decrypt compare password and this dot password. This dot password means that the current user's password, current returned user's password, the current document that is returned from Mongo. And we're gonna have a callback is match. And we'll, we're just gonna call our callback with error or is match if it's true we're gonna log in the user if it's not we're not gonna log in the user so now we're gonna go to the user controller and we're gonna go at the end add another function which we're gonna call login and we're gonna have a username a password and a callback we're gonna 
use the model and find one. Actually, we don't have username, we have email. And we're gonna find one by email. Then we're gonna return the user if we find one. So if we have an adder, it's the same thing. Callback, error, null, turn. If we don't have any user on the database, we're gonna call back null and no, you can do that. And we're gonna check just to make sure if user is not no. User dot compare password. So we're gonna use the function that we created in the model. We're gonna give it a password and we're gonna give a callback function. So if we have an adder, callback. If there is no adder, we need to check if it's a match. If it's a match, we're gonna create a token and we're gonna need to import JVT here. Uh, we're gonna need to install JVT or yeah, we're gonna need to install JVT JSON web token as a package. And then we're gonna require it here. Now we can sign a token user to JSON and we're gonna have a secret here which should be the same secret as in passport normally we need to use dot env this time and we need to provide an options so we're gonna say expires and it's gonna be in milliseconds so Let's see. I know it. One hour is sixty minutes times sixty. Times okay. I think we can provide also strength 24 hours and when that is done we're gonna call back at, we don't have any adders but we have a token which is gonna be JVT and we're gonna return the user also <clears throat> user dot ID and we can return the email user dot email we can return we can have the first name and we can have the last name here we can encode anything we want So 
So if it's not a match, we're gonna say wrong username or password. And we're not gonna return the user. It's always a good idea to not give specifics to which is not correct username or password. Okay, so now we're gonna need to add this to our user routes. And we're gonna do a post on login. We're gonna have a function with request and response and we're going to use the user controller login function we created and we're going to say rag body email rag body password and we're going to pass a callback error user and we can learn how to do some checks here for example if we don't have any reg body dot email or we don't have any reg body password, we can say status 400 JSON confirmation false message missing required email or password as required. Fields. So this is one check we can do here. We can turn this. So it's it's a good idea to do checks before you do to check for the required fields, to check if there are strengths, to check for minimum lengths for creating passwords and return proper messages. So now if there is an error. We're gonna return the status point four four hundred or oh, yeah we can return five hundred something weird happened or we can log in confirmation true and user now we can test this so duplicate login and user login and we're gonna have email Uh, we have argon at sfk.org sfk.org and test one two three so we're gonna send oh forgot to run the server Wise is not defined. All right, so we have an error at config password JS in line one. So this is where we have the error, and this is what we have the error. So we're gonna go here and check. We made a typo. We're gonna fix it, and now everything is running. We're gonna give it a try. All right, so we have wrong username or password. And this is expected because we didn't encrypt the first user, but we did encrypt the password of the second user. And now we need to try the second user. All right, so password matched because the encryption was correct. And we have a token that was provided by the backend and we have ID, we have the user and everything. <clears throat> so now 
we're gonna go and implement rest we're gonna initially go here we're gonna remove this and we're gonna change this right dot user dot underscore ID we have it or we have it like just ID and we're gonna all right we need to add some things here we're gonna create a middle layer function that uses password authenticate and it's gonna use JVT and we're not gonna give a session our passport is not defined we need to require password also all right and for this to be able to work we need to put this function as a middleware and then we're going to have the user ID. So now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to try um, we're going to do this try to create a to-do okay unauthorized hmm. let's try this So if we get users and if we create again and get users, okay, so this this is not correct. We're getting authorized. Let's console log what is being returned as user here I think it's null null and when we create is there an error here This one is null. Hmm. This happens in programming. So if you're just starting, this is your normal day. Don't get disappointed. This is what we get paid for, debugging. It goes smoothly only if you prepare for it. Hmm. Right. Now let's see. What is like user here? All right. Hmm. We're gonna need this like this. Uh, and we're gonna remove this. We're gonna try now. Yeah. <coughs> so now I don't need to send the ID here as a param because it automatically 
takes my ID, I'm just sending a token in my authorization headers as a bearer. And this one contains my ID and authenticates me. So this is like, I don't have to log in every time I send a request to the API, but I, I log in once, get the token, and I keep the token so the server knows which user I am. So instead of sending the ID here, we're sending the, we're accessing the rec.user.id, which is able from the passport library. So passport just finds someone, finds by ID, and if there is a user, returns it. And now, we're going to need to create the other functions. What are we going to do here? We're going to do find. So it's the same, find by ID where ID is going to be user ID and if there's an error, do the same thing. And if there's no error, we do the same thing here. So for update, um, uh, let's remove update. Let's just do delete, or else we're gonna have a really long workshop. Okay. Or yeah, we can leave also update. I think we have the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have the time. Okay, let's do delete. So for delete, we're gonna do user find by ID and update. We're gonna use the user ID and we're gonna use a function called pull, it's a MongoDB function, and it's going to pull the item from the, from the to-dos array that we're holding the to-do list, and we're going to send the ID of the to-do. So here we're going to need Instead of params, we're going to need to do ID. And so we're going to have a callback. So it's going to be the same. There's an error, return the error. If there's no error, return the user. And work is done. We have this. We have created done, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna implement also the mark is done controller function and here we're gonna have also to do ID, and we're gonna <clears throat> do the same user find one and update where user ID, and yeah, so we're gonna need to do a different query here. 
we're gonna match also the to do ID. So it's gonna be for ID. Let's do this. So for ID is user ID and to do's dot ID is to do ID. So we're gonna update the to do, not the user only. And we're gonna use the function set. And we're gonna to do's dot what is this called or what did we call this done so we're gonna set done to true and gonna have the same thing callback and it's gonna be just like this one yep so we have mark is done we have delete And we can copy this one. We can use the update. So we're gonna here need to do ID and we're gonna need, what do we have here to update? Description. So instead of done, we're gonna update the description and we're gonna do it like this. So it's gonna be the same. So we have all functions. Now we need to implement the endpoints. Uh, <laughs> routes. We're gonna need router.get. Auth then for only authenticated users and to do controller dot find user ID is going to be rect dot user dot ID. We're going to have params all and we're going to have a callback. We're gonna return the whole user with this to do list and if we have an adder it's gonna be the same thing or JSON and confirmation is gonna be true and we're gonna to do is gonna be user dot to do's So let's try this one. Let's duplicate this get to do's. It's gonna be a get request and we have only one. So if we create another one, do homework for intent. And we're going to create another one. Finish the radio for the weekend. Huh? So this is not needed, but it's not needed here. If we get, we're going to get all the to dos for this user. 
So this is the list of the to-dos that we have created. Okay. We're gonna we have create find what do we need? We need update, delete, and mark is done. So let's go with mark is done. We can do this with the method put. So mark, and we're gonna have an ID which to do we're gonna mark as done. We're gonna use the middleware and huh. so to do controller dot mark is done we have the user ID it's going to be erected user ID and we have a to do ID which is going to be rack params ID and we're going to have error and it's going to return the whole user here we're going to And we're going to return the whole to do's also. So let's try this. Mark is done. Put mark. And we're going to need an ID of one of the to do's. And we're going to try this. So, hmm, let's see, one is true, but it's not returning the new one. We had this issue before. We're going to add new, true. And let's... We're going to do the same thing here and the same thing here. Okay, so now we're going to mark another one as done. We're going to mark this one as done. So here I'm sending the ID of the to do. The ID of the user is automatically obtained from the token that I am authenticated because I logged in before and I don't need to send a body so now we're gonna see okay this is not true So let's try find by ID and update. Let's see if this so we have get to do's. Okay. We're gonna do this. Mark is done. False. 
get to those. Hmm. It's not making it. Let's try this one. Hmm. I think it was working. Let's see. Mark is done. Okay, if we try this to be set to false and we try this ID. It's not updating at all. Hmm. Okay. Let's try if delete is working. And if delete works, we're gonna fix this. So we're gonna use the method delete. We don't need an extra word here because we differentiate them with the methods. And Let's try to get this delete to do. And this is going to be delete, and we don't need this. Okay. We have three. Hmm. Delete is not working either. So we added this for and this is gonna be true. Options is not working here. Let's see again. Find one and update and use return. Yeah. Return new document. True. Okay, we can try this. Oh, I don't need. Okay, I'm gonna try 
mark is done. We're gonna mark the metal one. And it's not working. Absurd true. New true. Okay. If you're new to programming and you think and you watch tutorials that no one encounters problems, well, as you can see, everyone does. Just have to keep going. And you can make it. Hmm. Let's see what we're using in the user controller. For update. Find one and update. Find one and update. Yeah. We have the conditions and we have the callback. So why it's not returning new true. Alright. I think I know why. We're gonna need think we were passing the auctions object in the wrong place in the arguments so let's mark this is done yeah now let's switch it to false and make sure it works yep nice <coughs> just here and let's try the delete to do and delete get to do's so delete is not working define one and update work is done to -to So, well, this is not deleting the to do. Let's remove. The option and see if by any chance we can fix it. Let's try deleting this one. 
get to those. No. Nope. Hmm. <laughs> Are we giving this correctly? So this is, yeah, this should work. Calling the wrong function. Oh. Okay. Still doesn't work. It does work. Okay. Let's try deleting this one. All right, so now we have only one. Let's create one more. We have two. Get to do's, we have two. Mark this as done. We have two with the value of true in the done. And delete that one. Now we have only one. Perfect. And we're gonna let me find what yeah. We're not gonna use params here. So we have we're using find, post, but delete. And we have one more, I think. Router. But quest and response. And we can update the description. So user ID is going to be to do ID is going to be in the params. Description is going to be in the like body description and callback error user. So we're going to do the same here now. I'm going to duplicate this update to do. We're going to have a body description test update to do. And we're going to get all to do's. What did I do now? Okay. Callback is not a function. Update. Oh, 
Huh? It's weird. It is a function. Yeah, the user ID, the to do ID, description. Hmm. Callback is not a function. I don't know, it should be. Cat. Okay. Huh, yeah. We're setting empty params. All right. Okay, we have only one to do here. We're going to update it to do, and we're going to get to do's. No, update that work. Hmm. So, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, this should work exactly the same. I don't understand. It's basically the same thing. Description. It's going to be description. And other than that, everything is the same. Check the model description type string, yeah. Description, right body description should be the same. Okay. It's weird. It's a weird error. Hmm. All right, my fault again. I was calling the mark as done endpoint. Finally, yeah, we have updated description. So that's that's a full RESTful API with controllers, models, and 
express login functionality user and you can create update delete users Did we do those I think yeah it's just we didn't test them I think but we need to leave some time for Q&A session so this is it for me thank you for being part of Software Freedom Coso conference and thank you for your patience in listening I wish you good luck in your journey into becoming a developer software engineer it's not easy but it's worth it bye Hi everyone, does anyone have any questions? Okay, uh, thank you Agan for that. Um, let's hear if we have any questions from the audience. I see uh, Dashamir is typing something. So Dashamir asks, how does Node.js compare to other frameworks for building REST APIs? Um, first of all, uh, it's not a clear definitive answer to this one. Uh, personally, I like it because it's easier. You write less code, uh, you have less unexpected errors, and the downside of it is, it's a dynamically typed language. JavaScript is dynamically typed, and you can have type errors in the future. Recently, uh, we're using more of Golang for building backend Rust APIs, and we're ditching JavaScript on that. But currently, I, th I like it more than, let's say, PHP or Python, even though it has an event loop and it's not really asynchronous, it just fakes it and it's not multitasking so it's easier to learn in the beginning and easier to work with it and also the the fact of using javascript on both sides front end and back end makes it uh, easier to go and prototype stuff Thank you for the question, Dashamir. Can't wait for your session. Yeah. You can also contact uh, Agon directly. Uh, I had another question. Where can we see the code that you implemented? Can right. you post it somewhere? Yeah, I have created the GitHub. Repo, I just need to share it in the chat. Hold on one second. Um, I forgot to do that at the end. Also, the uh, session got too long. They didn't want to bore everyone. We had some unexpected errors. It's just part of programming. Here is a link to the repo, and you can find the code there and some instructions on how to run it.
Okay, so basically go to uh, just uh, on GitHub, uh, look for Agon Cecilia and you will find the uh, repository there. there. Yeah, the repo is public. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Agon. And uh, we'll continue next with at 12.30 with Dashamir Hoja and his workshop, Installing Nextcloud with Docker Scripts. See Thank you, you in, in a bit. Thank you. Thank you, Agon, again. Bye. Goodbye.